TRW. Crusades 2 is the game. Scenario is the Battle of Hob. Fought in 1119. Eleven nineteen. Yeah. So, um, feeling good about gameplay again. Um, reminding myself what I've enjoyed about this family of games before. Um, a little bit of uh, personal gaming history. Uh, since, uh, well, in recent days. So in recent days I got this idea that maybe I could go back, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out when I made the decision to, you know, take up Hex Encounter Wargaming on a regular basis, because I know that, um, I mean, I basically never had done Hex Encounter Wargaming, um, on a regular basis before. Um, before I started re uh, a number of years ago. Um, uh, um, that doesn't mean I didn't try a game here and there over the, over the years. Um, I played Africa Core. I played, I played Bobby Lee. I guess that's not uh, Hex Encounter, but Hex and Block. Um, but anyways. Did not... Uh, play hex kind of war games, war games in any routine way, in any regular way, in any um, ongoing way. Uh, in in youth, um, not as not as a young adult either. Um, so I thought maybe I could go back and look at uh, find some purchase records. And figure out because I know what my first few I know what my first few Hex Encounter War games were that I bought when I decided you know what I'm gonna enjoy this as a pastime and Royalist and Roundheads three was one of them so that, that was one of the handful I didn't buy them together I just mean it, there was a time period where I went ahead and bought the first few actually um. Um, this Accursed Civil War was another one from that same time period. Um, so there were a few there that I bought in in that time period. And so I was thinking, maybe I could go back and find purchase records. I didn't find purchase records, but what I did find is I did find old emails. So I dug out old emails where I was emailing to um, some other war gamers, and I was explaining what I had just played, what I was interested in playing, what I was interested in purchasing. <laughs> so, uh, there's a reference to, there's a reference to Royalist and Roundheads. There's uh, references to um, Crossbows and Cannon. So, um, so it does look like it's 2012. 2012, not that long ago, is, uh, is the time. Is, is the year I was looking for, 2012. And Royalist and Roundheads 3 is kind of the the the, uh, the emblematic game from that period. It's Royalist and Roundheads 3 is what I think of when I think of, um, again, starting to play Hex Counter War games on a regular basis. And the reason why Royalist and Roundheads 3 sticks out so clearly in my mind is the story of how I acquired it. Um, first of all, let me say that I'm going to tell the story of how I acquired it because it's it's memorable for me, but the bottom line is I had no idea. No idea who the designer was, no idea who the publisher was. So, Robert Markham didn't mean anything to me. 3W didn't mean anything to me. The English Civil War, I mean, I generally knew about the English Civil War, but I didn't know, I didn't know anything about gaming the English Civil War. English Civil War. I hope I didn't say American. English Civil War. Um, um, so, how did I acquire this game? So, I went to a, I was traveling, um, 
and I went to a, a game store. It was a large game store. At least I thought. I mean, I think of it as a large game store. It was a large game store. And why was I going to the game store? I was actually looking for miniatures. That's what I was looking for. I was looking at... I was looking for actual miniatures, and I was looking for miniature rule sets, maybe. Um, I was looking for maybe... Uh, um, maybe a... Uh, Maybe a card game, something like you know a card-based war game. Um, so that's why I was browsing. So I went in this game store. I was traveling. I went in this game store, which means I knew nothing about it. Um, knew nothing about the area I was in at that time. Um, knew nothing about the game store. Went in the game store looking around for these things I'm talking about that I already mentioned, and there was a lot to. There was a lot to go through. This this store had like a few, like multiple different areas, like um, kind of like multiple different rooms. So I was going through them all. Didn't make make sure I didn't want to miss anything. I was sure I didn't want to miss anything. I had the time. So way in the back of the store, way back where um, where it looked like. Uh, where it looked like the store had been flooded in the not too distant past. Um, uh, I found a handful of Hex Encounter War games. Not in good condition. I mean, not in good condition. I mean, not in good condition from the outside. Um, and again, I didn't recognize any of them. Um, didn't really mean anything to me, but I was. But. but Rollers and Round Hits 3. I guess it was w what I read on the box. I guess just clicked at the time. And I thought that it would be a harmless um, thing to try. Um, that's weird. So I thought it would be a, a harmless uh, thing to try. I thought um, if I didn't like it, I could toss it because it didn't look like it was a very didn't look like it was a very valuable artifact. <laughs> and, and if I liked it, um, what I read on the back made me think: well, if I like it, um, I wouldn't be I would not be too surprised. So my my goal there was to get this game. I was purposely. At, I got this game um, with the idea that I don't want a game I know anything about. I don't want any connections. Any uh, I want to take it completely, you know, um, like a, a fresh look. Um, and it was. <laughs> it definitely was. Um, so I did that. So. Um, within a year, n a number of months later, I, I did finally get around to getting out and prepping Royalist and Round Hits 3 and trying to play. Anyways, it turned out to be a disaster. The rules were so bad. And that just started a long journey of searching online for every for the answer to every question I could think of. And then, of course, I learned about the fact that there were all these other games that used the same basic design. And then I learned everything else afterwards. <laughs> but it started off fresh, like, oh, I'm going to lay this out. And, and, and it was very much, you know, c could I lay this game out, figure it out myself, and, and get something out of it. Which is what I've been pretty much doing ever since. Um, so... So that's that. It is 2012. Royalist and Roundheads 3 was there from the beginning for me. Although it didn't mean anything. I mean, that doesn't mean... doesn't mean any... doesn't mean any nostalgia factor. Not not in the typical sense of nostalgia, anyways. Um, I do think that I will always... I think that I'll always... You know... I will always give the, these, these games... I will always... 
tolerate these games. Uh, and I'll probably never completely get rid of them. Well, I, no, I won't get rid of them and I won't completely abandon them. Um, but that's more because of all the effort and energy I feel like I've uh, invested in figuring out what's going on and what was intended. Um, so that is, uh, that's that. Um, this is, uh, 09, 0900, uh, 0830 hours turn. Um, and we, okay, we're going to start with the orders uh, phase. The, um, the, um, sorry, yeah, the order phase. So, um, I'm going to look at the, yeah, the Egyptian forest then the Crusader. See basically what orders. What orders do I want to change? What orders should should be changed or attempts made to change orders? Okay, so again the uh, the uh, Turkish side has two uh, leaders, one overall leader and one other leader. Um, Il Ghazi, the overall leader, has an attack command and Toktigin has a has an advance command so should yeah I do I do want Toktogen oh wait a minute you know I wonder what order I I should give them if I don't want them to um, if I don't want them to close in for close combat um, if I wanted them to stay at range 2 and just fire away with their missiles, can you do that? Yeah, I'm really not sure you can do that, but what would it be? It would be... It's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. I'm going to experiment with a standard. I don't think this is necessarily going to work, but let's... Experiment here. Uh, Toktogin has a command um, rating of four, so to change his order, he's not within one, two, three, four, five, six. He's not within the command span of his overall leader, so there's no modifier. Is that right? Okay, he didn't. He didn't get it anyways. Um, he needs four or less to change his order. And I should have declared. I don't. That he would have. What I was trying for was a stand order. Um, that's the other thing. To make it harder, not harder. To make yeah, to make it a little more challenging, I think. I think players should put out all their changes and then try for, for changing them. Um, okay, so all of the crusaders have stand orders. So should they? I'm not sure they could, they should change them. I'm going to experiment with uh, experiment with standing for now. Okay. All right. That's the uh, order phase. Now we we'll go to the first player uh, or uh, the Egyptian side movement phase. Um, I think everybody everybody is in command, um, either within range or by extension. Um, two, three, four, five. Um, so this one goes up. Actually, that goes all the way. So toked again, one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be by extension, anyways, but. Alright, now movement. Um, again, advance. So they have to end. They have to end closer to the enemy. Um,. I don't think there's any way to get around that. Alright, I'm going to uh, move everybody. So the, the advance command meant that these guys were, were bound to move adjacent. And then the attack command over here meant that uh, it was pretty much bound to wind up with this snaking front line here. Um, 
since the units have to move at least half their moving allowance in most cases that's four in some cases three um, and closer and move closer to the enemy so um, that's what we have there uh, now let's see what it does we're going to go to the um, combat phase with the fire combat fa uh, phase or sub phase first defensive fire first um, so actually it's only the it's actually only the um, the four uh, Crusader uh, bowmen, and then we'll do offensive fire, which will be all of these mounted bowmen um, across most of the line here. Ooh, I didn't even notice we have some some really weak units. I hadn't even noticed that they're still mounted bowmen. Um, Oh, so the mounted bowmen are of different strength. I thought they were, in fact, they were all four eights. The mounted bowmen are actually, oh, there's five eight, or strength five, four, five, four, two, three, three. Okay, I didn't even notice that. All right, I will come back with the results of all the fire combat, both defensive fire first from the Crusader Bowman, and then the uh, Turkish uh, Offensive Fire. So the Mounted Bowman, I'm sorry, the, the Foot Bowman, they have a plus one at range one. Again, from the range table, uh, right there. And here's their, their line, their column there. So at range one, they're getting a result on six or better, and they're getting a one step loss on eight or better. So the end result of four Crusader Foot Bowman firing is one step loss, or two step losses, sorry, one step loss there, and one step loss there, and two units routed. That's pretty good. All right. Now, now I'm going on to offensive fire. So interestingly, the uh, Egyptian uh, mounted bowman for offensive fire got absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> I wonder how typical that is. All right, so we do have some melee. Um, so, yeah. Um, so even though I have a bunch of these mounted bowmen um, adjacent to enemy with the attack command, they have to, uh, no, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. It's, it's, it's fire or melee and or melee combat. So actually the fact that they all, they did all fire. So actually they don't have to melee because. But do they want to melee? I'm going to experiment first with not meleeing and just use them for fire combat. I'm gonna start off with that. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they're vulnerable to attacks on the Crusaders' combat turn, melee turn. Okay, so we definitely have melee with these three, and I do want to melee with these three cavalry units, and then do 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 do. Do do do. Oh, this one here. Especially because that's into the flank. And then that's it. So um, I guess I should have been doing this while I was thinking it out, uh, thinking it through. Um, let's see. Um, I guess one on one on one. I could gather up. Matter of fact, matter of fact, they will they will concentrate these two on the Crusader heavy cavalry. This one on the bowman there. Okay. All right, uh, we'll see what happens with these melees. 
for the end result of this uh, melee in the center here. These two uh, Egyptian cavalry units against this minute arms unit is um, they each got a melee check on the other. Defender goes first, I believe. Uh, Crusaders rolled an eight, which is more than their their um, morale of seven, so they rout. They uh, they cannot well to rout here is they can't rout in into any of the any units. Period. Um, and if they go there, they're in the um, zone of control of this Egyptian cavalry unit here. So units that must rout or must how do they say units that required to retreat but cannot instead lose a step but no route markers placed on them so they lose a step and then these are the morale checks for the two Egyptian cavalry units they each have a morale of eight they easily easily get equal to or less so that's that's that uh, melee in the center there now final one over here real quickly uh, this one here um, um, commitment for the Egyptians, they're in. They roll a one. The, um, the bowman, now, now he can, yeah, he's a skirmish unit. He is a skirmish unit. Um, skirmish units can, uh, where is it? Skirmish units may retreat through enemy zones of control, um, but stacking. Combat unit may not move through another combat unit unless the combat unit moving is a skirmish unit. So if he tries to retreat, skirmish units being attacked by cavalry units may retreat on a die roll of 8, 9, or 10. So he's going to try that first. So on a roll of 8, 9, or 10. Okay, he rolls a five, so he doesn't get it. So now he has to roll his... Now I think he does a morale check to see if he commits, and he does, actually. He rolls a seven. He rolls a seven, and his um, morale is seven. So they're going into combat. I'll just do the... the com Ooh, that's pretty good for the, for the uh, Egyptian unit there. Oh, well, the... <laughs> The uh, Crusader Bowman got a 7 as well. So, for this is attacking cavalry. So, first of all, the unit... Uh, what, what order? Um, cavalry attacking with an attack command. Because, remember, Nogazi has an attack command. So, that's plus 1. The unit uh, type modifier table has cavalry against um, skirmishers is plus 2. So, now we're up to plus 3. And I think that's all that I think that's all. So that's a 10. 10 on a four to six column is a morale check. So I'm just gonna put that here to remind me. Um, the skirmish unit has a seven. Um, skirmishers against cavalry is minus two, so that's five. Five on the one to three column is nothing. So the uh, Crusader, um, skirmisher there needs to check, needs to pass a morale check, and they pass. Pass with a six, current morale of seven, uh, and that's all the melees for this turn.